Hey everyone, welcome back to Silverun Forest for the next episode in our Let's Play series. We're just on our way up to the Iron Furnace to load up any pallets of metal we've got. I'm using the Schwarzmuller trailer, so this is the low loader that's included with the Platinum expansion, as the Universal Auto Load script has now been updated to work with this trailer, or I'm hoping it does. It does say that in the change log, so we'll see. So I'm just interested to see how many pallets of metal this one will take compared to the Demco. So if we do Shift R. That actually takes quite a lot. So 27 pallets we've got currently. We should get one more. So 28 pallets. So that's eight more than we could fit on the other trailer, which is not too bad. Uh, we don't need to top up the iron ore at the moment, it's got 40 odd thousand litres, so that's enough for the next four months, so I should take it through September, October, November, so yeah, probably December we'll come back up and get the iron ore topped up as well. So I've checked the roller coaster and it doesn't really need much, it's got plenty in there and the boat yard as well, so we'll sell all this at the silver on market, this is the easiest place to take it to. Uh, all our productions that require metal are pretty much full as well, so we don't really need to take any there at the moment. And the furniture factory... So the furniture factory... I'll get, get the right sell point. The furniture factory doesn't require metal at the moment because it's not producing the armoire, uh, which is the only one that actually requires metal. So the tables and chairs don't. I was hoping to sell all that in one go so we could see how much we've got exactly. So we're up to 143,962. So we've got around about 150,000 for that because we were minus 7,000. So next job what I want to do is I've checked the boat yard and that requires long planks to continue producing for the current stage it's on. So we'll head up to the old sawmill and load up any long planks and anything else we could fit on here. And then we'll take that to the boatyard and then sell anything else that's left from that. Right, so we're up at the old sawmill. And I think if we come in this way, give us a better way to get into the pallets. So we'll do the long planks and the wood beams. Probably some of the short planks as well. We'll leave all the prefab walls for another time. So if we back this in... I'm not sure how much will fit on here as well, maybe get them in rows of three because it is slightly wider trailer than the Demco. So we'll do shift R. No, it's only doing two. Oh, we've put those ones on a different rotation. It's taken all the wood beams and some of the short planks, so we'll see if we can fit some more short planks on. Might as well take as much as we can while we're here. Maybe to just get the forklift truck out of the way. I will still use this because obviously if we do sell the prefabs, I'll more than likely we'll put them on the train because that's usually the best price. Um, we can manually load those with the forklift then. I think that might be all we can fit on. I know we can get a few more. Fourteen thousand litres of short planks. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's going to fit any more on top of those at the back. Although there's one at the back, you'd think it'd fit. Let's say no. So we'll take these down and say we'll take them to the boatyard first, and then anything that's left on the trailer we'll sell at the silver on market. It should give us a nice amount of money then. Well, let's see what the boatyard will take off our hands. So it desperately needs long planks, because we currently doesn't have any at all. So it looks like it's taken some of the wood beams as well. Uh, it looks like it's taken all of the long planks. Uh, some of the wood beams. I don't know why that was then. Uh, <laughs> 
randomly started to unload itself then, uh, stretch. <laughs> so we've got one pallet of wood beams that have randomly fallen off. Now, I'm not sure if I accidentally pressed something which started to extend the trailer out for some reason. Let me see if I can reload these. I think I've broke my trailer. <laughs> it doesn't seem to want to reload any... I've it's set to full only, so change that to partial pallets as well. There we go. And that last one. If, ah. Right, so that's <laughs> that fixed. I'm not sure what happened there, but so we'll get these over to the silver on market and get these sold. And, yes, and the next job I want to do is get the grass field cut. Uh, so before we do play that up, we'll get another cut on that for hay. I'll stock up our hay bales. It should be more than enough then to keep us going through to the next year. I don't know why I get this error as well when I come here for planks not accepted, even though it does take them. I'll get those last few pallets off the back. And there we go, another 40,288, so it's 251,980 now we're up to. So, so what we're going to do first is... We'll cut the grass field first, get that done out of the way. Then we can continue cutting down the trees around that area. Trying to get as many of those cleared ahead of next time. So next time we'll plow in the new fields. And then try and get the crops planted for next year. So we'll just drop that off there. Uh, now this trailer actually has the auto load as well. I'm not sure if we'll need the Demco. So we could possibly sell that one. As one of the reasons why I wanted to use that today was just to see how much pallets we could fit on compared to this one. Uh, this one obviously doesn't fit quite as many either. So we'll keep it for a bit. Uh, but we'll probably decide to sell that. So I'll go and get the John Deere and the Moen. We can get our grass field cut. Uh, one thing I forgot, we've got that stack of logs that's slightly in the way, we just need to try and push those out of the way so we can get all the grass cut. I say it kind of makes sense to make use of the grass now it's fully grown rather than just let it go to waste. So it will give us a little bit more hay as well. So if we do need to buy any more sheep, at least we know we've got enough feed for them. I'd rather have too much hay than too little. See if we can just push these just off the edge of the field or off the grass area. I think there should do. And just get rid of that smaller piece. And there we go, we'll get all the grass cut. We'll get that switched on and lowered down. Uh, for some reason this edge of the grass, if you cut it, it, it cuts it but just disappears, it doesn't drop any swath from it. Uh, but when we come to play the fielding we'll probably extend the field as far over that way as we can to make the most of the area as well. So yeah, I'll get all this done because we've not long ago we cut this so you've seen it all before so you're not going to miss much. And then I'll get it tedded, windrowed. And then we can get this baled up, get the bales moved out of the way. And then the next job will be to continue clearing the trees along the back. So we'll try and pull out all the large trees, get those cut up, loaded up on our trailer and sold. Possibly do one trip to the old sawmill if it needs it as well. Okay, so the mowing's all done. We just need to get a windrower and tedding out. We can get it turned into hay and then rowed up ready for baling. So as we don't actually own any of the, that equipment, we'll buy it. So currently in the used equipment cell, there is the Vermeer R2800, 8.5 meter windrower. 
So we'll get that 17,354, which is slightly cheaper used than the the other one that we used last time. And for the tether, I think this time as we're going to be buying it rather than leasing it, I'm just going to go for the slightly larger 9 meter one. So we'll go for the Kubota. Uh, we'll just keep the decals on old, so we'll buy that as well. So we do now have all the hay making and grass equipment we need. So I say first job we need to get it tedded. We can put the tether on the front pre point and take both over there at the same time. Okay, well, we'll drop the rake off and then I say we'll get the tedding done first. Get that load down. So this will be a little bit quicker as we've got slightly wider tether this time. Although it didn't really take too long last time. It just makes sense. Well, we've got the money just to get a slightly larger one. So we'll get that switched on and load down. And we can get all this tedded. So then I'll get it rowed up and then it's just a case of getting it bailed. At least then uh, that's all out the way and done. And we've made the most of the grass. Okay, so last strip of hay to do and that's the baling all done. I can't remember what the bowel count was and I forgot to reset it so I'm not sure exactly how many bowels we've got so far around about 15 I think uh, but we have to say that should be plenty of hay to keep us going for the sheep uh, I think we already had enough uh, but it does give us the possibility if we do need to get another pasture and some more sheep and also we've got those ones that we've got now uh, not far off being at a point where they're going to reproduce so we'll double the amount we've got soon so we'll go from 50 to 100 let's get that switched off and we can get these last couple of bales unloaded off the back of the conveyor so yeah it, it made sense to cut the grass before we plow it all in as it was fully grown I say then we, we definitely don't need to worry about hay anytime soon so we should should be okay now until next summer and we won't be doing hay multiple times in a year uh, it was, this was just literally a one-off that's uh, why I cut out most of doing it on the on the videos because you've seen it in a few episodes ago so I'm gonna get all the bales loaded up onto our flatbed trailer and then we can get those out the way and then we can get back to trying to clear out all the large trees from that land so we'll get them all cut down dragged onto the flat area where we can then process them and load them up I we'll say first job we'll get the bales out of the way Okay, so I've just dropped off all the bales. They're all being put into the shed. So what we're going to do before we head back over to the field is we're going to stop by Eddie's and we're going to lease the John Deere skidder so we can give this a try out and also hopefully make it a bit easier to get some of the trees out of the forest. The Volvo does struggle on that hill a little bit. So I've, I've tried this briefly on the live stream and it, it worked okay, but I think I need to play around with it a little bit more to get used to it. So I think we're just going to keep it standard as we're going to be leasing it. It is expensive, so it's going to cost us 15274 for the initial lease costs. Um, hopefully, if it does work out, we'll probably end up buying it. Uh, but I say I don't want to invest that money straight away, as we currently don't have that money. But uh, The other thing I want to get is for the wheel loader. Uh, we will need to go to actual tools, wheel loader tools. So I want to get the log grab. Now I'm not usually a big fan of loading logs with the wheel loader, um, but I'm going to give it a go and we're going to try out the new log grab that comes with the platinum expansion. Which is, so that's the standard base game one. 
which I've not actually used this one in FS22 yet, so I don't know what that one's like. And then we've got the unloading grapple. So I don't know whether that one will be better for unloading as it is an unloading grapple. However, this one will be better for picking up logs off the ground and loading. Yeah, not quite sure which one. Well, that one looks like it could pick up more. But it's how well you can scoop up logs to get them in there, which is I always find is tricky. We'll get this one and try. If that one doesn't quite work out, I'll give the the Magsy one a try. Uh, bucket, we're okay for. Oh uh, yeah, we don't need anything else at the moment, so we can get this on the back of the the low loader. And then we can get that over to the field. Then what we're going to start doing is cutting the trees down with the chainsaw and then dragging them out with the winch or with the grapple on the back of the John Deere. I'll just extend those ramps. And then we can use the Volvo to process the logs on the flat ground on the field itself. And then we've also got the blade on the front of this so we can then push the log piles a bit neater. So we can make it a bit easier than we do. I don't know. <laughs> it's going to fit on here. If When we do come to load up with the wheel loader, we've got the piles a bit neatly stacked. So we can push them a bit neater with the blade on this, which should help make our loading a bit easier. At the moment, we're using the front loader, which we can only pick up one, two logs at the time. So if we can pick up four or five logs at a time then obviously that's going to massively reduce our loading time okay so we'll just drop this off of over here for now so we'll get that unfolded get the straps off and we can turn the engine off on the truck so I said I have briefly used this on the the live stream and it did work well we wasn't using it on particularly flat ground and we didn't have the best bunch of uh, logs to try and grab with it uh, but it does have the 15 ton winch as well so you can pretty much pull um, four full trees with this as well with the winch system so I so said what we're going to probably do is I may clear out some of these trees on the edge first with the Volvo because they'll be easy to drag down and then the ones that are a little bit further up the ram uh, getting the Volvo up here is a little bit slow it's not the fastest going uphill so some of these ones we'll cut down with the chainsaw using what I used earlier so we'll get the degrees we'll cut them all down the straight way then we can just come up with the John Deere attach the winch, drag them down onto the flat area and then we can process them on, on this nice flat area and then hopefully that should make loading a lot easier so I so say yeah first I'm going to go around and get the ones I can get with the Volvo comfortably I'm going to leave all the other trees in, I'm not going to clear cut, but I do want to take out all the big ones. So we'll leave the smaller ones, we'll probably do the medium sized ones, so the 23, so anything probably over 23 metres we'll take out, anything smaller than that we'll leave. So before we get these fields played in we'll do, do all this area and get all that cleared so we're not working on our actual field itself so yeah I'll jump in the Volvo and I'll start getting some of uh, those trees cut out and then we can give the uh, the skidder a go
Okay, so we'll make this the last tree we cut. And then what we'll do, we'll get these all loaded up. So they're out the way and then we can continue cutting the, the ones that are a little bit further back so we can get those dragged down and processed down here. We've got a little bit more space to do that. So we'll probably get all the the other trees out first. Then I can use the skidder to line them all up a bit better. And then we can just go along with the processor and process them all. So what we'll do next is we'll use the skidder to just tidy up these piles to make it easier to pick up with a wheel loader. Just switch this off somewhere out the way. Uh, we do need to get this refueled as well next time. As we are getting very, very low on the actual fuel. So I'll just park this up over here. Get that switched off. So yeah, I'm going to have to go and get the log grab as well. But what we can now do is use the blade on the actual John Deere so we can push these piles. So there are slightly neater stacks, which when we do come to load them is going to make life a bit easier. So we can push them that way. I can just remember the button controls, which ones are for which. And then we can use the blade to then push them end to end so they're fairly aligned which should I say make it easier to pick them up in bigger piles then. So that's the piles mostly um, pushed a little bit neater. I think that one in front of us there could do with pushing back a little bit from this side. So we'll just try and do that if we can. There's a few slightly overhanging this way. So we, we don't need to be perfect because our trailer does have that bit of extra space. So we can get away with them being slightly off. Oh, looks like there's that that one log that uh, got no collision on the end of it well, we'll try that so yeah I'll go and grab the the new log grab or the wheel loader and then we can have a go trying to load these up with that and seeing if that can help speed up our loading process so we'll just park this one up here and I'll go and get that okay so I've got the log grab on I say I'm not holding much hope for this actually being any good but We'll give it a try. Now I'm not I'm not the biggest fan of uh, using wheel loaders to load trailers. Something I don't often do. I tried it. I can't remember the last time I actually tried a wheel loader with a log grab. I think it was probably on Felsburn towards the start of FS19. So a long time ago. Uh, this trailer is not so bad because you've got nice wide bunk so you, if you do get the grab somewhere in between them you can drop it right down although I'm not doing a very good job with that I find some of the uh, the other trailers are, they've just got too many staves on and it makes it difficult to actually get the grab in I say we've managed to pick up what three logs there see if we can get more of these ones on yeah didn't do a very good job of that <laughs> I should try that again oh yeah if it if it goes like that, then it's not going to be too bad. It's obviously going to drastically increase our... or reduce our time to load a trailer.
Okay, so last few logs to put on and then we'll get this one sold. Uh, so far, I've been fairly impressed with the actual log grab. I do like the fact that it has a proper locking script on it once it's fully closed as well. Which does mean that the logs aren't sliding around side to side. Even if there's not enough in there to properly grip on them. That's one of the things I was a bit worried about. Was that if you couldn't get a good enough grab full. Uh, you get that problem then when it doesn't quite hold the logs. Like it does on some of the log grabs. And then what happens is the logs just slide around side to side. And <laughs> done a fairly decent job picking some of them. And I've come to the final one. And I seem to be having a few problems. So that's not quite in the middle. But I think it should be enough to get us on there. So I've got that one log that's fell off on the side of the trailer that I'll have to try and sort out. Now we could have probably fitted another two trees on. But I think we'll leave it at that for for now I'll we'll get this last one on it does lock down so if you have got I found if you it is fully locked and you lock it down and um, it does pick up some of, the, some of the logs on the underside they seem to lock on as well uh, not properly so they will fall off but it does lock them a little bit so that's that one so it's that middle bunk's not perfect, it's sitting down a little bit on the one side, but it's uh, not too bad. So I say it went a lot better than I was expecting it to. But I'm not sure how well this would work on uneven on ground. Down here on the flat, it's it's obviously really good, but when you start getting on uh, some uneven ground, I don't think it would work as well. So definitely one of those in the future we'll have to find f nice flat areas to get the trees to and then we can then uh, process them on flat land and load them on a flat surface. Whether that be setting up the yard or to cut trees down then drag them up to the loading area and then do it that way. So there's quite a few more trees that we'll get down and I'll say what we'll probably do with these is cut them with a skidder and then drag them down and then process them on the flat area. Well, what I may do first is, because there's a little bit of space on the back, I'm just going to probably get a couple more of these trees down that are quite close to the edge. And then we'll finish fully loading that trailer up. I'll get a, I think we'll probably get another two, three trees on and then get that tidied up and then we'll get this sold. Okay, so I've got another three trees cut down and we're pretty much fully loaded now. So we're going to take this up to, well, over to the sawmill. Actually, we could take it to the paper factory and sell it there. Uh, we don't need the paper factory, so it's a production I do want to get, but not just yet. Uh, we'll take it to the sawmill, uh, which is just here. And we'll get this load sold. So there's quite a lot on here. <laughs> this is getting quite heavy. I'm not sure on the exact weight, so hopefully the train doesn't come. Nope. Yeah, they are jiggling around a little bit, these logs. Sometimes I find it helps once you start moving. If you unstrap them, then restrap them. Sometimes it resettles the actual load if they are starting to uh, wobble around a bit. So, yeah, we'll get these ones sold. So, the paper factory or the paper mill, it's a produ production we don't require. Like the paper or cartons aren't required for anything at the moment. So, I think the, the only two productions we need are the spinnery for producing fabric for the sails or the boatyard which is not a priority uh, the other one is the shingle factory which requires I think long planks from the old sawmill so that is one we will need to get soon so that will probably be the next production that we do buy I'm just a bit worried that they, I, don't, I don't know if the old sawmill will produce enough long planks to supply all these productions so we'll get this load sold, if I can actually get to the trigger. So there we go, 91,597 for that trailer load of wood, which is not too bad. There were a few spruce trees, I think there was like two or three spruce trees and a couple of the pine trees as well. So 
they obviously don't get the best price, but that takes up to 287,805, which is what I'm going to do is if we go to leased equipment, I'm going to buy the truck because we do use this quite a bit. No, I don't want to return on purchase. So it's going to cost us 146,241, but we actually do now own the truck. So that's one of our leased equipments purchased. So we've uh, reduced our, the amount of equipment we've got on lease. So it still leaves us with 141,000, which I'm going to hold on to for now. And then we'll decide what to do with that next time. But I think for today, I think we'll end it there because we've still got a lot of work to do on this land so I don't want to progress through to the next month just yet because uh, we do need to get the crops in the ground next month as well or the ones that require it and there's still a lot of trees I want to get out before we get these fields ploughed in so next time we'll probably finish getting these trees out of this area of land get them dragged down here onto the flats tidy up all these off cuts as well I'll, I'll probably get these all loaded up on the trailer ready for next time. I don't think I can quite pick that one up. Nope, a little bit too heavy. And then we'll get these all pulled out. So I'll probably just concentrate now on the largest trees up to that road. Get those dragged down here, cut up into six meters, loaded up. And then we'll either take them to the old sawmill if that needs topping up. So let's just check on the old sawmill. So 65,000 liters. So I think that requires roughly around about or just under 40,000 litres a month. So there should be enough in there to see us through the rest of September and then October. Uh, but we may take a load up there just to top that up as well. Oh, I forgot there's a stack of six metres here as well. I <laughs> completely forgot about this stack. So yeah, we've already got some trees ready to be loaded up. And uh, we'll probably get these stones out as well and then sort the stones out next time. So get a tipper trailer, start loading those up and getting the pile of stones by our farmyard cleared out the way as well. So yeah, plenty to do, and also get the new fields ploughed in and finish that track off as well. So we'll finish getting that track down to the second field and get this divided up. So yeah, lots to do, so we'll leave most of that till next time. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, then please don't forget to give it a like. If you've not yet subscribed to the channel, then please do consider subscribing so you can keep up to date with the latest videos on Farming Simulator 22, the Let's Play series here on Silver and Forest, and also the time lapse series and the live streams as well. So again, a big thank you to everyone that's watched, and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.